Good morning. My name is Sherry, and today I'm going to show you a card that we're going to do at my camp. And you may have already seen this card, and this is Branson. Apparently, he's going to help me again. He often helps me, so he's sitting out of the way. It's kind of early. I still haven't had all my coffee. Um, I have a lot to do. We're getting ready to leave on vacation, and so I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff filmed. So I'm starting early, and I'm sure they're like, wait, this is not our normal routine. We need to have computer time first, but I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff done in not the same order. But here's the card I'm going to do today. And you may have already seen, I have a tutorial for this um, already up. And I created this card. It may have been the very first card, I think, that I created from the 2019-2020 catalog. And when I did it, my girlfriend Heather had just come from um, a Stampin' Up! event in North Carolina and we had her stuff overnighted from the new catalog, hadn't seen anything, and it uses the beautiful, beautiful Mosaic Mood paper, designer series paper, and it uses, I used her Daisy Lane um, stamp set and punch, which are in the catalog. And so I was, um, I'm trying to get my camp ready before I go on vacation. And so I wanted to show you kind of how I did this. Because I know you, this happens to a lot of you. Because you think I have everything. I know some of you that aren't demonstrators think us demonstrators have everything. And we don't have everything. Sometimes we get to the point where we have a lot. But we don't always have everything. And I wanted to make this card because I love this card. And I know that you do too because it has lots of views on um, YouTube. And so it's been hanging here and it's one of the ones I wanted to do and it's very summery and it's very easy and it doesn't require any coloring, but I don't have the stuff. Um, and here's a little thing for you. Stampin' Up's had a lot of daisy punches. I've never had them. I don't know, for some reason, like the daisies just aren't my thing. And so over the years, I don't know that I've ever owned any of our daisy punches. So I still don't have this daisy punch. So in my need to recreate this card since the daisy stuff belonged to Heather and I don't have it and I didn't really I could have borrowed it from one of my other demonstrators but I wanted to have it all ready and didn't want to bother with it when I got back so here's what you do when you want to make something that you've seen online or that one of your um that you may have made at my camp or you've seen on my video or one of your demonstrators have so I'm going to recreate the card with what I did have so um you may have some of the stuff and really the only thing I had was the paper which in this case the paper does a lot of the work because the paper is gorgeous so here's what I did it's a quick card because that's what I wanted it to be for camp was something quick so here's the paper here I'll let's see if I can put this because I have one pack of the paper I haven't bought any more of the paper and we chewed through it when I had um, my girls over here to make the card um, in April because we, I designed a card one day, the next day they were all here. And that was one of the most fun weeks. So and on, instead of being able to use the beautiful rose paper, that's all gone. And we're, um, I have one sheet, and a, I had one sheet of hummingbirds because we used all the hummingbirds, and then I had like two that I could piece together um, for this card. So here's the hummingbirds, and see they, this, all of this paper on one side is regular. It's a specialty paper, and then on the other side, it all has this beautiful, beautiful sheen. So I have, where's mine? I've already cut, here it is, the um, hummingbird out. So when you do this, you can see my hummingbird. They're all going to go different directions. So it's already going to make everybody at camp, they're going to have to do the card a little bit different than what I did because um, the hummingbirds are all going to go a little bit different. So placement is not, none of, nobody's cards are gonna look the same. And then I went with this piece instead of the roses because I don't have any more of the rose paper and this is equally as beautiful. Maybe not quite 100% as beautiful because that rose paper is spectacular. And um, the Stampin' Up! incentive trip right now is in leaving from Greece this weekend and one of my best friends is on it, yay Susan. She left yesterday which won't be when this video airs um, but Italy one of my favorite places in the world and this paper reminds me if you've been to Italy it reminds me of a lot of the um, mosaic fountains and stuff that you you would see so that was another reason I wanted to do this card so this is terracotta tile this is um, mint and I'm just gonna layer this here I'm gonna add some ribbon to this card there's no ribbon on this card because I didn't want to cover up the roses. On this, it can it could stand to be covered up. 
it's still beautiful and see this side's beautiful and it's the roses but it doesn't have that specialty I didn't want to lose <laughs> the specialty it's you know always the dilemma with the double-sided paper sometimes as much as I love the double-sided paper I'm like if you just gave us one beautiful side I wouldn't feel so guilty for what I just did because you have to so then I have no daisy punch and then my daughter was here and she's like mom I have the daisy punch and I'm like well the cart's done <laughs> so I could have brought it from my daughter I did not know she owned it um, sometimes I feel like I own all of the things and my daughter owns none of the things and then I forget which I am doing a dinosaur card at camp and she is the owner of the dinosaur stuff I know y'all are thinking you don't need any more caffeine but this is my first my first cup so then I went over because I didn't have the daisy punch. So if you don't have the punch that you used on the card, like look at what you do have. So I have no flower punches, but we have tons of dyes, right? So I have tons of tons of dyes. So I stood and I own lots of dyes. <laughs> so I do own, have lots to pick from. So I stood and I looked at all of the dyes that are hanging up on my thing. And then you may have seen, because this video we just posted, it hasn't posted yet, but it will have posted when I post this, because these are all gonna post while I'm gone. So this is the Sweet Silhouette dies. Love them. So they were still laying on my table. So look at how beautiful these are. So I'm like, well, I'll just use those. They come with the tree. So let me pull these over just so you can see how I did it. I've already cut two of them because I used three. Because in the scale of the card, the one giant daisy was all I needed. So here's the tree. See, it was this was still laying on my table because... My office is pretty clean because, you know, when you have a house sitter coming, even though it's a guy, he probably doesn't even care if my office is a hot mess. Um, but I still feel the need to have my office not look like a creative person lives here. Because that's, you know, if you're creative, sometimes it looks like a creative person lives in here. So here's, this is the dandelion. But I didn't, it doesn't need to look like a dandelion because we all know hummingbirds don't eat from dandelions. So I don't really need the stem. So I just wanted it to look more like a little flower. So and I so I don't need the stem. So here's the way I found works best with the dandelion. I don't need the stem. So if it just cuts through there, that's okay. So just put it through. I did find running back and forth twice with this one works best. So one, two, and I know it's not best to do this. So you don't need to comment and tell me. If you comment and tell me, I know it's because you fast forwarded and didn't watch. Because you shouldn't just do that. It's not great for your plates. But, you know, caffeine, hurry. So, see, it's cut that. And then if you didn't watch my um, video yet with the tree, the new take your pick tool option, this screws onto the end. So, go back and watch it because I'll show you how it works. So, just lay this on here. Pull this out. Pops right out. And then because the take your pick tool, when I did it on the other thing, I still had my scrapey thing on here. But now I'm going to put my scrapey tip on my other one. Keep my pokey thing, my terminology, you know, the correct terminology. Pop it on here. And then you're, you can get all those out and you're all done. And everything you need for your dies then is on the one take your pick tool. So now you see you need two. So now you have your scrapey thing and your putty on one and all of your dye stuff on your other. So now we have three. And then, so you see I had this. Because I was still playing with it. And it's okay, but it needed some more color. Because this, you know, I was still comparing, which is what you do. Like when you're creating a card on your own, you're often not comparing. Like, because that might have been beautiful if that's where I was starting. But I was still seeing this beautiful rose, you know, with all these beautiful colors. And I just felt it needed, it just needs more. Like, it isn't quite as, the rose background on this is just stunning. And there was no more of that paper. So, um, and my girls at camp, I know they use birthday cards the most. So I went and got the Rococo Rose. Um, and then here is one of my favorite new stamp sets. It's called Here's a Card. And I really like it because it has the saying that says, um, I can't begin to count all the times we've laughed together, mostly because numbers are hard. Because that it, I should just give that to everybody um, that I know because math is not my thing. But that's not the one I really, and it's also got a beautiful happy birthday font. And this fits on tons of our 
Like I went back over to my dies and it fits on tons of the little labels, but I didn't even want to use another die. So this is the storybook label punch. You may already have it because it was part of celebration. If you don't have it, it's now in the catalog. So I have Rococo Rose, which is gonna tie some of the pink that I'm trying to, you know, match this. Just trying to show you how to kind of like copy a card when you don't have the exact stuff. So Rococo Rose, pull in the terracotta tile. Get this little happy birthday. Always stamp first because it's so much easier to, unless you have a photopolymer and it's clear. But if you stamp first, then you can do this. Then now you can line this up. Otherwise you're guessing. But this is a really pretty shape for this. So now I was left with this. And it still just needed like something. Like, and then I was like, do I speckle this? I'm gonna add this one little flower center. And I was like, well, I haven't done ribbon for a while, so let's do ribbon. So it ends up being a little bit different, which is okay, because when you start from a point and it ends up different, that's okay, because you, you're not, you don't have the exact same stuff. So let's see where we end up. And it's equally pretty card. It's not exactly the same, but that's okay. So take this off. And it's it's been a minute since I have done one of my ribbons. So let's, if you haven't watched me since then, because I probably haven't done a polka dot tool. And if I had had time, I would have dyed this one of the colors to match. But we're leaving on vacation. I know when you've got vacation, you don't have time to dye ribbon. So the white will work. So I've got it doubled over. And about, um, I probably do what people always ask. It's probably like twice as long as my card. So about that long. I just do it because I've done it so many times just from feel. So you've got it this long. And then you are going to, what you want to do is hold the double over and then you're going to make sure you have enough here on this end that you're going to be able to fold that around the back because you don't need to waste all of your beautiful ribbon going around to the back of your card. And then tie your bow. And again, you want to leave on this side so there's going to be enough to go around that and just kind of hold it there. So see, now you've got some that will wrap here and some that will wrap here. But again, you don't need to have enough ribbon that's going to go all the way around the back of your card because you don't need to waste that. So my ribbons often look fluffy on the top, but all my ribbon's on top. So if you all are putting your ribbon on the back of your card and you think my ribbons are big, well, my ribbon's not on the back of my card. And now I'm, I'm talking to you and looking to see if it's in frame and I may have missed it. No, I think I got it. And then just pull this tight. And you may have to like kind of pull it a little bit. You just want this one knot in the middle tight and that will hold it. It's easier to do when um, you can move it up where you can see it and not try to keep it in camera frame. Because my arms are at a funky angle when I do it this way. You can't also adhere the ends to your card um, if you're using a strong adhesive, it's stuck. There we go. There we go. And then once you have the tighter knot, you can kind of adjust these so the loops are kind of the same. Because one of mine's bigger than the other. And then flip your card over. And then I know that I want my um, bow to be down towards the bottom. So back here, put your adhesive. And then these loops that you want, flip those over and see you're going to let those grab on both sides. Like that. So now it doesn't look great, but that's okay because our first order of business is to get it attached on here so it doesn't come loose. So over here, again, where you know the ribbon's going to be, if you still have fuse, the fuse will hold it a little bit tighter. But this nail works, you just want to make sure you have enough and then where the rest of your card's gonna be. But see, I have enough right here that I know it's gonna hit. 
and that's gonna hold my card. And then now I can kind of mess with it because I know that it's gonna hold. Let me have it on my finger. So separate these apart. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to cut them. So now I have it like this. And now you can place all your stuff in here. So I'm gonna do my, um, and so now this went from feeling like it kind of needed something to the polka dots being the something that the happy birthday needed. So you know that you don't need to stamp anything else because the that's on there. So two of my little um, dandelions are going to be flat to the card. And then one's going to be on a dimensional. Except you do want to make sure because this is a different direction than my original hummingbird. So you want to make sure that it's going to go where you're. I should have done this. I wasn't thinking. I'm going to have to move this a little bit. Let's see. If we put the flower here. I'm going to move this over. I should have done this first. Actually, I'm going to just move this lower. All the way down to here. This is the way I cut these, because then I'll be able to move them. Because um, on my other card, you'll see that they kind of cover up the words. But now you can kind of move them and just place them so they don't cover up. So now we have this. And this can go here. And then I'm going to put my hummingbird on, get two dimensionals for it, do one on its wing, and then one someplace more down on its body, just because you don't want one because you don't want it to get smashed. It needs two to hold it up. There we go. Perfect. And then take your, these are the, um, Perennial, perennial essence floral centers. And this little, these tiny cases are hard to open. And they already have adhesive on them. You just want one on your um, main image, your main, the top flower. There we go. Like that. And then we'll just kind of this so it's not covering up our words. And then you're done. So we went from this to this. So it's copied but not the same because I didn't have the same. Here's my other one because my um, hummingbird went, goes in a different direction like her body is not long. So there you go, that's what you do if you don't have everything, because we don't all have everything, but you can make it work. You can make it work with what you do have. So I hope you like that. I'm a close up of it. Super fun paper, it's the Mosaic Mood and the Sweet Silhouettes, or the Daisy Lane, if you wanna do it this way. But this one, there is a, um, a tutorial for this, and it was when the catalog wasn't out yet, so who knows what I say, <laughs> because I had not even seen the catalog when I did this one, because Heather had one copy of the catalog and we hadn't really looked at it yet. So it's probably back in April where that tutorial is, but those, that, that's this one. So everybody have a great um, week. And remember right now, if, if for every $50 you spend with Stampin' Up, they're going to give you a $5 um, bonus buck to use in August and I have some specials too so go over to my website stampinonline.com and if you would like to be part of my team 
There's some super great specials, and I have, as soon as you join, then you also get to take part in what I'm doing with my team. Um, so they've got some stuff that they're able to get for free right now too. So as soon as you're part of my team, then you also get that free stuff. So everybody have a great day. Bye.